Okay. So you just learned about the turning point battle of the Revolutionary War, the Battle of Saratoga. Benedict Arnold's um, heroic actions helped the Americans outfight the British, which uh, allows France to realize this could be done with their help. And so France and therefore Spain agree to join the Americans in this fight against their joint enemy, the British. But it's going to take some time for France and Spain to gather their supplies, gather their soldiers, gather their navy, and get them over to the colonies to help fight in this war. In the meantime, we are going to go into winter, and this is going to be the worst and best winter for George Washington and his army, and this is a winter that they spend at a place called Valley Forge. So let me explain to you about the winter of Valley Forge and where Valley Forge is. Valley Forge is in Pennsylvania, right where we are, near Philadelphia. And the reason that Washington and his army are going to spend this winter in Valley Forge is because the British general, General William Howe, and his troops took over Philadelphia again for the winter. If you remember, William Howe is the general who, during the Battle of Saratoga, disobeyed General Burgoyne's orders and didn't go to New York, instead decided to go to his favorite place to hunker down for the winter, Philadelphia. Um, if you take a look at the map over here, you can see the B is where General William Howe and his men are hunkered down in Philadelphia. And General George Washington, he doesn't believe in invading cities and forcing colonists to let soldiers in and live in their homes. Instead, he and his men camp outdoors. And um, General George Washington chose a place not far from Philadelphia on purpose, about 20 miles from Philadelphia. You can see where the A is. That is where Valley Forge is located, close enough to the British to keep an eye on them and know what they're doing, but far enough away. And so this is where George Washington and his 10,000 soldiers are going to spend the winter of 1777. And it is a miserable winter for the 10,000 soldiers of the Continental Army. One, it's one of the coldest winters of the entire war, but more so, by this point of the war, most of the soldiers don't have shoes on their feet. They don't have warm clothing, no blankets. And again, they're not, you know, warm and cozy inside people's homes. They're camping in tents. Um, Washington had them build some small cabins uh, that many soldiers would share. And so it, they're freezing during this winter. Um, but additionally, they had very, very little food. They're starving, they're hungry, they're cold. It's a miserable, miserable winter. To make matters worse, disease swept through the camp at Valley Forge. Terrible, contagious, and deadly diseases like smallpox and typhoid fever. And there's a reason that these diseases kind of swept through the camp this winter. One was because many soldiers were sharing one small cabin. You know, one person's sick, many people are sick. We talked about that with the Mayflower. Um, but additionally, these soldiers... They were so tired. They were so hungry. They were so cold. You know, in their eyes, they were just kind of taking a break for the winter. They didn't really think about hygiene and cleanliness. So, you know, they weren't washing their their bed mats. They, um, if a bunch of soldiers were sitting around a fire, maybe cooking up some some bread over the fire. Um, if someone had to maybe use the restroom, they would maybe take a few steps away from the fire, do their business. Um, right near where they're cooking. Um, obviously, if there wasn't enough food for the soldiers, there probably wasn't going to be enough food for the animals like the horses. So if a horse died, for example, the soldiers were too tired, kind of too lazy, too hungry, too cold to, to bother to move that dead animal. And so that dead animal would stay there and rot, again, spreading disease. Um, this was a terrible, horrible, miserable winter for Washington's army. And so many of them died that winter. They died of, of just freezing to death. They died of terrible diseases. They died of malnutrition and starvation. And just take a second to predict how many of these 10,000 soldiers in Washington's army died just that winter of cold disease and malnutrition. The answer might surprise you. 2,500 of Washington's men died that winter, not by gunshots from the British soldiers, not in battle, just from cold disease and starvation. That is one out of every four of Washington's men died that winter at Valley Forge. Um, if you remember the, the writer of Common Sense, Thomas Paine, he describes that winter by saying, these are the times that try men's souls. This is when you are either going to make it or you're gonna break. And so um, it was a very, very miserable winter, but, on a positive note, it really was a great winter for Washington's army as well. And that is because it was during this winter that Washington's army is going to receive some help from 
some unexpected places. First, we are going to meet someone from France that is going to join our story. He is the General Marquis de Lafayette, and he is French, and he decides that he really wants to help the Continental Army and George Washington. So he decides to join the Continental Army without asking to be paid at anything. And he lives under the same horrible conditions as the soldiers, basically sending the message to Washington and his men, hey, I'm one of you. And he ends up becoming one of George Washington's like BFFs. Like Washington learns to just really trust and love this guy. Um, and so one of the best things about the General Marquis de Lafayette is he is just a ray of sunshine. He is that guy. And you guys all know somebody like this where, you know, it doesn't matter what's going on. You're feeling down. You get around this person and they just make you feel better. That is the Marquis de Lafayette. And I believe he's young. He's like in his early 20s when he meets Washington and his army. You're going to realize what an important role he plays in this war. Um, if you remember the Plow Tavern, this is where the Congress is meeting when they're here in York. If you go drive by the Plow Tavern today, you're going to see a soldier, a bronze statue outside of the tavern. And that is a statue of the Marquis de Lafayette. That should tell you if his statue is kind of the one sole statue outside of this tavern, you can see what a role he played. And the Marquis de Lafayette does come to York. And you actually see that in today's episode of Liberty's Kids. So General Marquis de Lafayette, he is introduced to Washington and his army this terrible winter at Valley Forge. Um, but we're going to meet someone else this winter. And this guy is from Germany, from a place called Prussia. And I'm not saying Russia with an R. I'm saying Prussia with a P-R at the beginning. And you're going to hear that in the Liberties Kids. He's going to be called a Prussian. Um, so I just wanted to clear that up. And you might think, gosh, well, the Hessians, they're from Germany and they're fighting with the British. A couple things. Number one, remember that the Hessians don't have anything against the colonists. They're being forced to fight with the British by their leader um, because KG3 hired them. And so Germany's kind of neutral in this war, essentially. There really isn't a hatred towards the colonists. Um, but Baron Friedrich von Steuben, and I know his name sounds very silly. Baron is his rank. He's a baron. And Friedrich von Steuben. Now, if you think that name is long, that's actually the shortened version of his real name. It's really Baron von Friedrich von Steuben, blah, 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 blah. His name is like 90 names long. And he decides to join Washington and his army. Now, what's really cool is he doesn't really speak a word of English, um, but somehow he manages to communicate with Washington. And what makes him amazing is he comes into Washington's camp at Valley Forge and he looks around and realizes these men are a hot mess. There's no organization. No one knows what they're doing. They're so out of shape, disorganized. They're a hot mess of an army. And one of Baron Friedrich von Steuben's best skills is he knows how to train an army. And so he spends that winter training Washington's men. And that winter, he turns Washington's disorganized hot mess of an army into a well-trained machine. Spring. Oh, so you remember when I was trying to come up with that word that that uh, that Burgoyne reminds me of that thing? I was talking about like a spring that goes, okay, it doesn't matter. But anyway, he turns Washington's disorganized hot mess of an army into a well-oiled machine by the end of that winter. So when the winter of Valley Forge is over, Washington may be entering um, the next battle with 2,500 less men, but the men that he does have are going to be much better trained. And that is all because of Baron Friedrich von Steuben. Now, one of the problems that we're going to have is that winter, Washington's men, they're tired, they're hungry, they're cold. And here comes this guy who doesn't speak a word of English trying to tell him what to do. And not everybody appreciates being told what to do. And so some of Washington's men are going to start to question Baron Friedrich von Steuben and question, is he really a baron? Did he really have a high rank when he was in Germany? And Washington's going to tell him, I don't really care. I don't really care what his ranking is as long as he helps our army. And so you'll see in the episode of Liberty's Kids that there are some of the men in, in Valley Forge that don't appreciate Baron Friedrich von Steuben coming in and telling them what to do, but it will be necessary and it will be extremely helpful. And so I hope that you enjoy this episode of Liberty's Kids. There's so much to it. Um, a couple things that's going to happen in this episode. Number one, you're going to see Granny Gates. And Granny Gates uh, is up to no good as he usually is. Um, he is still trying to get Congress to basically fire George Washington and replace 
the leader of the Continental Army with the person he thinks should be the leader himself. And Granny Gates has a plan to do this. He decides that if people think that the Marquis de Lafayette, that new guy from France that everyone loves, is um, siding with Granny Gates and not George Washington, that Congress will realize how awesome Granny Gates is and, and, and make him the new leader. Um, so in this episode, you'll see Granny Gates trying to kind of um, kiss up to the Marquis de Lafayette a little bit. The other cool thing is you are going to uh, see in this episode our very own York, Pennsylvania, because that is where Congress is at this point. And so um, that's where you're going to see some of our characters going uh, during this episode. And I hope you enjoy. <laughs> 